Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna cover the seven stages that anyone goes through in a long-term partnership, with stage number three being probably the most important, and a lot of people move from three right to seven, and that's a massive mistake, and it's honestly where most people are at when it comes to like marriage or long-term committed partnership. Let's go through the stages one at a time, and I'll unpack this. Uh, make sure you take notes, and look at your own experience too, okay? Reflect on your relationship life and see if this has been true for you. Stage number one is courtship. You're courting. Hey, do you like me? Do I like you? Are we a thing or not? And that's us putting ourselves out there on apps. We meet someone at a bar or a restaurant or a yoga studio and we start the dating process and we start finding out is this person, do I like them? Do I have natural chemistry and feelings for them? And I'm kind of vetting them. Are there, what kind of problems do they have? Do they have debt? How old are they? What is their history of relationships? And that's courting. Stage two is it advances pretty quickly for some people to infatuation. And the infatuation stage is what people call falling in love. Now, I did an entire video on infatuation and why this is problematic because people confuse infatuation with love. And all infatuation is, it seems, is nature's trick to get you to procreate. We fall for someone hard initially, so the chemistry is on. It's like, wow, we both feel ecstatic, we feel bliss, the sex is great. It seems like there's no problems, but the problem, the main problem with the infatuation stage is when we are infatuated with someone, we put them on a pedestal and above us, and we think they have things we don't have, and we also can't see, we're blind. They're like this big bright light, and we're blind to the shadow behind them. You know, all of their issues and baggage and traumas and all that stuff, we can't see it, which it makes it very easy to have a good relationship when you're in the infatuation stage. Typically this lasts anywhere from a month to two years. Two years is kind of the long end. Most people do not stay infatuated with someone for two years. If it's a long distance relationship, that can happen. If you are in the same town and you see each other almost every day, it's not gonna last two years. And the same areas of the brain light up when we're infatuated as when we are high on drugs. And that's essentially what's going on in the neurochemistry of the brain, is we feel this incredible elation when we think of this person, when we see an image of them, yeah, when we're with them. And this is when we write poetry. Uh, there's a lot of love songs written here about, wow, this is awesome. I think I found the one, or I think I've met the right person. And I know for me, I used to be infatuated with women who were completely unavailable. And what does that say about me? I would just be like, wow, she must be, because she was good looking and she was this, that, and the other. And I was like, whoa. I remember being infatuated with some woman in, in my 20s that knew how to juggle, and she was really attractive. And I was like, wow, a woman who knows how to juggle, that must be my wife. And of course, I couldn't see what a nightmare she was behind the scenes. Uh, stage one, courtship. Stage two, infatuation. This one, remember, is very temporary and it won't last. The drugs will wear off in you know, a couple months to a year. Plan on that. And then you move into stage three, the challenging or conflict stage. This is when shit gets real. So the challenging or conflict stage is where most people blow out and then they move to stage seven, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Conflict or challenge is just because we don't know how to work through difficulties when shit gets real, and we rely on our past, what we did as kids, what we did as children, when it comes to, say, conflict, or the person's being really emotional, we don't know what to do, so we shut down, or we try to shut them down. This is when we can't seem to figure out how to work through difficult stuff. We argue, there's someone getting quiet and someone is getting anxious, someone's pulling away, they're getting irritated by us, but they won't use their words and say, hey, this is what's bothering me. They just kind of get quiet and withdraw. That is so infuriating for some of us. Whereas other people, other relationships, they start to argue. Let's say this is, we move in and we have, we get pregnant in the infatuation stage and now we move in and all of a sudden, all of our problems start to emerge from behind the scenes. And this is where all of our childhood trauma comes out everything that's unconscious starts to spill out sideways. And we try our best to contain it and hide it because we don't want to have this person reject us or go away. But invariably, it starts to come out. 
And when we see it in the other person, we think, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. These are all red flags, I'm out. This must be the wrong person. So people confuse the challenging conflict stage with this must be the wrong person. And I can guarantee you that's not what's going on, although it is an opportunity for you to go, wow, this person's got some issues. Do I wanna sign up for this? And I can guarantee you, if you say, no, thanks, I don't wanna sign up for this person, you will find another relationship in two years or five years. So the same thing is gonna happen. Their issues are gonna come out and you're gonna be like, wow, this is really upsetting. This is really triggering. I mean, every time I would fall for a woman in the infatuation stage, as soon as it started to get real, as soon as she had some needs, she got emotional, she wanted to have the talk, I would just be like, I'm out. And I would push her away and I would look for another woman to be infatuated with. And then I repeated that for 10 years. The conflict and challenging stage, if you do not learn how to work with your own triggers, what's coming up for you, and you start taking responsibility for those, and you work with their triggers, like, wow, you're really emotional, you're really shutting down, you're really avoiding right now. How do we deal with that? How do I deal with that? If you don't start to apply yourself, you're gonna move from short-term relationship to short-term relationship, always chasing good feelings and avoiding uncomfortable feelings. And this is what separates strong, empowered people from weak, disempowered people. That's, that's a lot uh, to sit with, but you want to embrace conflict and challenge and see it all as an opportunity for the two of you to get stronger, to be more empowered together, and to create, co-create something awesome. Now we start moving toward, if we apply ourselves, if this partner A and partner B starts to apply themselves, and they're like, you know what, I'm not gonna run away during conflict, I'm gonna stay, and I'm not gonna make you wrong, I'm gonna learn how to deal with my feelings, your feelings, all these emotions that are coming up, I'm gonna become a better communicator. We're now experiencing a lot of stress. Whew, we're gonna get better at this. And for couples that get better at the conflict challenging stage, they advance to stage four. Couples who don't advance bypass to stage seven. Stage four is the collaboration stage or what I call mature love. We begin to learn how to collaborate. We learn how to take responsibility for our feelings. We learn how to empathize with the other person's feelings, and we're now moving into actually loving someone. Notice this is different than infatuation. Infatuation is, I just want it to feel good all the time. The moment it doesn't, I'm out. If we move through the challenging stage and we're like, actually, I really care about this person. I really like them. I respect them. I'm gonna stay and see what happens. Now we move into actually practicing loving another human being, which is quite difficult, as you'll find out in any long-term relationship. And they have to do the same thing. They're practicing loving you in the same ways. And couples who stay and try to sort this out, build, they learn to collaborate, they learn to be a team, and they're moving into practicing mature love. That is stage four. Now, if this couple does being a team well, and they collaborate, they share power equally, they have each other's backs, now we're moving into establishing security. What does that mean? It's like, think of a foundation of a home. It starts to begin, it starts to get really, really stable and strong. And all of the challenge and conflict that doesn't go away, this is a transcend and include model. So let me side note here. Transcend and include means you advance to each stage and you include the previous stage. You don't kind of bypass and get rid of the previous stage, you include it. So ideally, in stage five, building security, you're experiencing some courtship, you still go on dates, once in a while you get it really infatuated or excited or the sex is really awesome. It's less than the infatuation stage, but you're still doing, and there's definitely challenge and there's definitely conflict, but you're getting smarter and smarter and better at working through the difficulties like a team. So establishing stage five, establishing security, the bedrock and the foundation of your relational home, if you will, gets extremely stable. So it can weather any storm. Now your relationship becomes a safe harbor and a launching pad, as Dan Siegel says. It becomes a place when you get beat up by life, you come home to your relationship and you get resourced and refueled. And then when you're ready to go out and take on the world again, your partner is cheering you on and they have your back and they're like, I got you and you feel so good because you feel resourced. You feel, ah, I can't believe I feel so safe with this person, secure with this person. Like they have my back and they have my best interests in mind. They see me. 
I feel emotionally safe with them. I can just let my guard down and open up and they are there for me. This is not infatuation again. This is real love. And this is, um, conflict happens. We shut down to our partner. Even in this stage, we get closed off, we get defensive and scared, but we open back up. So it becomes an open, close, open, close process of building more and more stability in your partnership over time. Now we can advance to stage six, six, which is expansion. And this is when we could open a business together, we could have a family together, um, we could travel the world together. We can accomplish incredible things because we have this incredible, stable, secure foundation. From here, we can just, it's like anything's possible and that's how it feels. Children, for example, who grow up in secure, strong families where this, they feel like they can conquer the world versus kids who grow up in traumatic households feel inferior, they feel less than, and they're always strategizing how to get around things and how to manipulate their environment and they feel very unsafe. So you want an adult partnership where the two of you have each other's backs, you feel safe, you feel free to express yourselves, and now you can go do things and co-create things together like a family. A lot of people don't wait until this stage to start a family. They start a family in the infatuation stage blind to the fact this person has an immense amount of issues, and now they complicate it and make it incredibly challenging to have a successful family or partnership because they didn't see it coming. All right, so please don't subscribe to bullshit fantasies where infatuation is, where basically your emotions are dictating and calling the shots. Don't do that. Poor investment strategy long-term. Okay, what is stage seven? Stage seven, this is where people shortcut. They go from, they can't figure out stage three and they can't seem to get through it. So they go right to stage seven, which is ending. Every single relationship ends. Every single one. My wife and I have been together 15 years at the time of this recording. She's going to die one day and or I'm going to die. We're both going to die, but someone's going to die first. This relationship will end. Ooh, that is going to be a difficult day in my life or a difficult day in her life, depending on who passes first. She will likely live out, outlive me because that's what the statistics show. So a good, amazing, stable relationship that has gone through all these seven stages or six stages at stage seven, it's, it's going to end. It's going to be over someday. And if you don't make it to stage four, collaboration and mature love, because you can't figure out conflict, you're just gonna skip right to stage seven and the relationship will end. You will fire them, they will fire you, it'll start to erode, someone will have an affair, the relationship will be over because the two people together couldn't figure out stage three. They couldn't figure out the conflict and challenging stage. The moral of the story here is if you wanna have an amazing partnership, you put a lot of time and attention on stage three so that you can evolve as a couple and get stronger and stronger and then expand and co-create together. Those are the seven stages of relationship. I hope this video served you well. Definitely look up the um, infatuation video uh, here on YouTube that I created. Uh, I think you'll understand that a little more. In terms of stage three, one tip on stage three. How do we get through that? Well, you're gonna to have to get good at the conflict repair cycle. I do a number of videos on that. I wrote a book about it. But stay here on YouTube to, to watch more of these videos where I'll guide you through the conflict repair cycle stage. Thanks for subscribing to this video. Share this with a friend. Leave a comment below, and we'll see you in the next video.